The Supreme Court just heard possibly one of the most important cases of our lifetime, again. Because right, today, the nine justices listened to arguments about whether Trump should be banned from running for office because of his actions around the insurrection. With all of that, of course, stemming from a legal challenge brought by Trump against the historic and unprecedented decision by Colorado Supreme Court to remove him from the primary ballot under Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. With that notably, banning people from holding office if they've sworn an oath to uphold the Constitution and then committed insurrection against the government, which has only been used to bar candidates eight times since it was adopted in the 1860s. So that also, including two years ago against a New Mexico County commissioner who trespassed on the Capitol during the insurrection. But it has never been used for a presidential candidate. You know, with this, we've seen a lot of overlapping rulings and legal back and forth as to whether this is even a possibility. So all of that brought us today, where in court, there were three main questions that the lawyers argued over. Is the president considered an officer of the United States, which is the term used in the Constitution? Did Trump's actions on and leading up to January 6th amount to an act of insurrection? Does Congress need to act first before Trump could be disqualified under Section 3, or is that power vested in the states? Well, we heard the justices present a range of opinions and questions on all this, one thing that both the liberals and the conservatives seem to express here was skepticism, right? And that regarding several aspects of the Colorado ruling and whether Trump can be disqualified for his actions. In fact, according to the Associated Press, eight of the nine justices indicated that they were open to at least some of the arguments made by Trump's lawyers, with only Justice Sonia Sotomayor suggesting in her questioning and remarks that she might uphold the ruling from the Colorado Supreme Court. And while you had a lot of different things being debated here, there was a big focus on the question of states' rights, with a majority of the justices implying that they do not believe that the states can disqualify candidates in a national election without Congress enacting some kind of legislation first. And that opinion was further hashed out in comments from Chief Justice John Roberts, with Roberts arguing that the 14th Amendment was adopted to limit states' rights while empowering the federal government, and saying that the 14th Amendment is the last place that you'd look for authorization for the states, including Confederate states, uh, to enforce, implicitly authorized, to enforce the presidential election process. And that was also echoed by liberal justices like Kagan. I think that the question that you have to confront is why a single state should decide who gets to be president of the United States. Also notable is that there was more limited questioning from the justices regarding whether Trump actually engaged in insurrection. But we did see this back and forth between the lawyer for Colorado voters and Justice Brett Kavanaugh, with the justice pointing out that Trump has not been charged with insurrection in any four cases and 91 charges that he faces. Some of the rhetoric of your position seems to suggest unless the states can do this, no one can prevent insurrectionists from holding federal office. But obviously Congress has enacted statutes, uh, including one still in effect, Section 2383 of Title 18 prohibits insurrection. It's a federal criminal statute. And if you're convicted of that, you are, it says, shall be disqualified from holding any office. And so there is a federal statute on the books, but um, President Trump has not been charged with that. So what, what are we to make of that? So generally, not looking good for those who wanted Trump removed from the ballot, especially because while this involves Colorado, it's not limited to just Colorado. Or the decision here will be binding to all the other states where Section 3 challenges are ongoing or have already been decided one way or the other. And those far-reaching implications are also something that the justices expressed concerns about, with Roberts saying that if the court upheld the Colorado decision, other states could kick other candidates off their ballots. It'll come down to just a handful of states that are going to decide the presidential election. That's a pretty daunting consequence. Justice Samuel Alito also chiming in, saying that if the states were given the ability to make their own decisions of disqualifying candidates, it could create an unmanageable situation. And so as far as what happens next, there's a few ways the courts could rule. For one, they could issue a broad decision about whether Trump is eligible to run for president and hold office at all, with several justices indicating they want the court to issue a sweeping ruling like this to just resolve the whole situation once and for all. Or they could also essentially kick the can down the road and say, hey, this is a political question that needs to be decided by the lawmakers and voters, not the courts. And we should note generally soon, because unlike normal SCOTUS decisions, this one's actually being fast-tracked. While they might not be able to make a decision before Colorado mail state primary ballots this Sunday, they could realistically rule before Super Tuesday on March 5th, which notably is when Colorado and 14 other states will hold their primaries.